Hello and welcome to another episode of Historic Hindsight. I'm John, that's Tom, and today we're going to talk to you about brunch. That's right, Johnny, brunch, or specifically the thing that goes into making most of your brunch-like items, like eggs, and how eggs led us into a war because we're Americans. And that's what, and that's what we do. Over eggs? <laughs> Over eggs. So, uh... We fought... Okay. So humans in general, specifically Americans, have always been like just looking for any reason whatsoever to get involved into a war. Uh, they just wanted to kill some folks, and, especially back in the day. I mean, I mean. yeah, and, and hell, we almost started a war with Britain uh, the third time over a shot pig. So like, a yep, war over yep. eggs shouldn't really come to a surprise. I guess it's anyway. not that surprising. Yeah, I suppose it's not. Um, but we, okay, so we, we are okay in the olden days. We are obviously. obviously um, yep. When is when was this war fought? Yep. To put things back into you know into context or into perspective, here it's the 1860s. Uh, America is at war with itself, uh, and while most of the country is tearing itself apart, fighting over whether or not they should be able to own people. Uh, out in California, right. while it is a Union state and it is a oh, yeah. you know they are <laughs> supplying troops to the Union, they're so far out of the realm of engagement in this war that they got nothing so, uh, better to do than to uh, to fight over some eggs. So they they essentially got jealous that their brethren in the you know in the east were allowed to kill each other and they they, <laughs> they, they, they didn't have anything to kill. So, so they so, wanted to be able to uh, do, do it. Yep. Let's let's fight over some eggs. Some <laughs> eggs? Yeah, yes, eggs, exactly, exactly. So the California gold ru gold rush happened from 48 to 55. So in that process uh -huh. it brought a ton of people over into California, which started jacking up the rates of everything because um entrepreneurs, I mean exploitive uh, owners of property started jacking up the cost of everything. So, you know, pick, pickaxes, shovels, uh, nails, uh, gold pans, everything that was related to gold uh, was jacked up, but also the cost of food oh. uh, it, it was, was a, jacked up. It's a sl supply and demand thing. It's the a, demand for all of those things increased, and the supply was probably lagging behind, so you got to jack up the prices. Yeah, So uh, and, and eggs were always kind of rather expensive, comparable to items like you know eggs today, uh, because the, the, the chicken, uh, mass uh, industrial chicken farming you know, for, for the eggs didn't exist at this point, so your eggs yeah. are coming from uh, either backyard, yeah, either, farmers. Yeah, backyard farmers or, or wild birds. Um, and Which, uh, to be fair, today still, if you buy them from a backyard farmer, you get your, you know, grass-fed whatever artisan eggs at the the farmers market. Those are still expensive. Yeah, those are still like four or five dollars a, a dozen. Uh, so now, while the rest of the nation, even during the Civil War, was seeing egg prices around twenty cents, which is four dollars and forty-one cents today, so high, but not like outlandish. A dozen. High. That's a dozen, yeah, that's a dozen. Okay. Uh, the cost of a single egg in California to its height in the 18, uh, uh, late 1850s, early 1860s, rose to $3 an egg, or $66.18 in today's money per egg. Maybe just don't eat eggs. <laughs> right? They're not that good. They're not that filling. Uh, they, uh... In fact, uh, what are you doing? Well, you got to use them for baking and stuff. But in fact, egg costs were so high mm. that when a miner in Hangtown, California, miner, I mean like gold miner, in Hangtown, California struck it big, he went to the local saloon, which was the El Dorado Hotel, and went in there and said, hey, give me your most expensive meal. And they gave him a uh, bacon egg omelet with oysters. And it wasn't the three, oh. yeah, it wasn't the three oysters that was expensive. And they called it the, it was uh, the egg. Yeah, they called it yeah. the Hangtown Fry. And, uh, and by the way, this, uh, uh, this omelet cost him six dollars, or the equivalent of one hundred and thirty-two dollars and thirty-six cents today. Can you imagine spending one hundred and thirty dollars on a breakfast sandwich for a, for, a, for an oystre omelet? Like I don't even <laughs> with oh, seafood oyster omelet. Oh, get the hell out of there! Well, I'm not a seafood fan, but I imagine if you, I guess if you like oysters, you. It might be okay. It might be okay. So I tell you all that to put the pers you know put everything in perspective about the cost of eggs in California yeah. at this time. So that's why things can go a little hayride uh, for them. Well, and then people probably started getting upset <laughs> that the <laughs> eggs were <laughs> getting that expensive. And if I said, "Bring me your most expensive meal," and, and they brought an me a hundred and thirty dollar omelet or breakfast sandwich, whatever, I'd be pretty mad too. Yeah, like imagine winning the lottery and going to IHOP. <laughs> 
for like breakfast yeah. food. Like that's how you're splurging. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, so in any case, in California, before California was a state, the the Russians actually discovered a, a set of islands off the coast of what is now San Francisco, known as the uh, Farallon Islands. And these islands were the largest in North America uh, habitat for, for birds, one of the largest okay, condensed yeah. habitats for, for a, a specific set of birds. Uh, they found a common muir there, which uh, loved to lay a shit ton of eggs. And when there was approximately oh. 400,000 birds on these islands, you're going to get a shit ton of eggs. That's a lot of eggs. eggs. So the Russians that were seal hunters actually used this set of islands as a resupply or actually just kind of a one-stop shop because they're going to eat the birds, they're going to take their eggs, and then, oh, the seals also like these islands, so everything that we need is right here off these islands. That works out nicely. I imagine a lot of those birds are using it as breeding grounds, mating grounds, or stops, too, along their travels through through migration. The sea lions, those seals, they're going to eat those birds as well oh, so yeah. yeah you know there's yep. sort of easy easy pickings for everybody um when the united states are going to be able to take i mean acquire california from the mexicans mm-hmm. yep. peacefully i might add in a treaty that had nothing to do with bloodshed that's great that's right? perfect that's how it should all be you know treaties that are uh you know Totally unfair to one side. One side, yep. Uh, the goal, but to be fair, we did very much sing, like one too. sidedly. Like that was that was a very like I don't even think the Mexicans even tried in that way in that war. <laughs> they're yeah, they're kind of they're kind of lucky that that wasn't another state. But in any case. Uh, California in 1848 gets the gold rush, flood of people coming in. Uh, one of these uh, one of these immigrants is a man by the name of Dr. Robinson, who uh, who was a pharmacist by trade, just got out to California, wanted to open up a shop. He's looking yeah. around. He's seeing the price of, uh, of eggs, and he goes, hey, there's an island like 30 miles off the coast of San Francisco that's full of birds. I'm going to go ahead and get into a rowboat. I'm going to row out there and uh, and meet with my— 30, yeah. Good God. Yeah, it's 30 miles on a rowboat, too. That's ballsy. On <laughs> <laughs> a, a rowboat in, in the Pacific. Ocean, <laughs> the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, he goes with his brother-in-law Orin, and they row out to these islands, and they uh, they fill their boat to the brim with as many eggs as they can uh, as they can put in it. Yeah, and they row their way back onto the shore. But in in the process between collecting the eggs, putting them in the boat, and getting that boat back to shore, they lost half the eggs. Even with that said, they were able to sell the eggs for three thousand dollars or sixty six thousand one hundred seventy eight dollars in today's money for one boat hey, you ride, one trip. Yeah, you want to know what? I'll row a boat for uh, 60 miles for $60,000. Yeah, and it was enough money. I'll try it. Yeah, anyway. it was enough money that... <laughs> I'll probably die. Yeah, it was enough money that Dr. Robin... I would die, definitely would die. I'm not <laughs> making 30 miles on a rowboat. Uh, Dr. Robinson is actually going to have enough money with that sale of that one batch of eggs to open up his pharmacy. Now, for, yeah, he could buy all the cocaine he needed at that time. Mm-hmm. Cocaine, like, because it was, I assume pharmacies only oh, yeah. had cocaine, it's morphine, and whiskey. Cocaine, morphine, and whiskey, and laudanum. They got laudanum. You forgot about the oh, the, uh, the, the yeah. opium. You can't yes. forget about that. Of course. Uh, but, you know, and, and, and now, while that was a successful trip to him, he goes, that was good once. I, I'm going to hang not up. doing that again. I'm going to hang up my hat because. These islands aren't the most, suck. yeah, they're not the most accessible. They're a very rocky island, and so you can't Ooh. land a big boat on it. You really do have to get a rowboat, and even a rowboat is a challenge to get onto the island. I mean, yeah, because you're fighting waves crashing into all these yeah. rocks during all that. Like, it, yeah, that's, it's, yeah. <laughs> there's a reason that the birds are using it as a safe haven to lay their eggs, because it's hard to get to for predators. For any other predator, yeah. All the seals, you know, they're in danger when they're, you know, in the water fishing or whatever but as soon as they get on land they're safe from they're safe. everybody yeah. except for some doctor who wants to open up a <laughs> open up a pharmacy uh but when word gets out because he's opening up the pharmacy and people are like hey how'd you get the money to open up the pharmacy well i sold some eggs i found yeah. <laughs> i just happened to scavenge off those islands out there so when word gets out about that uh six men formed the pacific island company or egg company in 1859 although the name does change multiple times and so most references you find in history for it are just the egg company but i'm gonna say the pacific it, the pacific egg bunch company. of guys who couldn't agree on their, their, uh, and they their kept, name to put on their clubhouse yeah they kept changing it over and over and over again they get the idea <laughs> I'm going to set up a I'm going to set up our, our you know an egg company and we're going to stake claims to two of the islands the southeast Fairlawn Island and the adjoining West End which is actually the main island in that set of islands uh, okay. and, uh, and and they're going to start processing uh, processing these eggs so they go out there they set up a port so to speak but by port I mean it's like 
they uh, throw uh, some logs. Yeah, they threw some logs something. to make a little bit of a dock. And then they do set up a, uh, a like a, a cabin, a couple of you know small outbuilding cabins so that sure. they can camp in. Uh, because uh, it, it, you can only really farm these eggs in the spring. That's when, the I guess, the laying season yeah. is or whenever. So yeah, during their breeding season. They get from May to July to get these eggs. Uh, and so, you know, they set up a couple of outbuildings. Uh, and, of course, they're, they're rowing this 30 miles out there. Yeah. So this is how the this is how, I found this funny. This is how the harvesting of the eggs is conducted. So between ten and thirty Greek and Italian immigrants were were hired by these six men to go out and get the eggs. Uh, the Pacific Egg Company would row the you know row out to the island, set up their camp, mm-hmm. and stay there for the summer. Of course, constantly bringing these eggs back and forth during this whole winter. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the first day they arrive, they actually go around smashing all the eggs that they can find and beat and kill as many seagulls as they could find because the seagulls were scavenging the mule, uh, the, the, the eggs that they were wanting, the common muir eggs. Uh, seagulls were, uh, were, were eating those, so we don't want the seagulls. Okay. And they smash all the other eggs, so that way the next day when they go back out, they know that all those eggs are brand new fresh eggs and longer shelf, <laughs> longer shelf life. The they just committed God. a genocide of these poor birds. How, how many? How, yeah, how many species did they wipe out during this? Well, is this in your, is well, that yeah, in your I research? do. I, yes. I, I, okay. You, you, good. You, you, stay God, tuned for the end for that. An for eggs, people. For eggs. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So these muir birds, they uh, they they want their eggs because not that like the, you can't eat a seagull egg or that there wasn't other species of birds on that island, but the muir eggs were the biggest, uh, and so yeah. you know, hey, more bang for your buck, right? That's right. And yeah. the, in the muir, you only need it, one for your loaf of bread it's, or cake. It's not a penguin, but it's like a. It kind of looks like a penguin that can fly. It's like in that, yeah, you know, like a black and a whiteish kind of bird. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like a like on the uh, Happy Feet. Mm-hmm. The um, they have the birds that are not penguins, but are. Oh, what are they called? It anyway. doesn't. It doesn't matter. I put a picture of the bird up it there, so you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, anyways, I'll put a picture of the bird up there. You'll 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 get it. You'll see it. Anyways, um, puffin. Uh, things they're like puffins. Either, yeah, they're kind of like a puffin. Yeah, uh, things would be uh, would be peaceful, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, but not for long because it's not going to take very long for people to go. Hey, uh, and somebody else is going to be like, why can't I do that? Why right? why can't I do that? So there is start to be competition, but mostly the competition well, sticks to the northern island that uh, that the Pacific Egg Company hasn't really set claim to. The northern island is also like the most inaccessible crappiest one to try to land a boat on so they're Which like is why they didn't deal like, now i you know, have at it with that one R- russia was involved at the beginning of this they're still on this island they're still do are they doing where's russia uh russia at this point they you know obviously they never owned that that area they're just they're seal they're just hunters using it so it's just a port for, not a port but a re- fuel uh, okay. supply for for uh, so they don't they don't even care that yeah, somebody no, came no, up no. and set up camp they're not worried about no it. no the russians never owned it this is just a place that the that the that the seal hunters I mean, would stop to at. be fair it does it, it's never mattered in history if america's owned something <laughs> and somebody else was on it like, we're gonna uh, you're i don't own that but i want to so i'm gonna take it now <laughs> right so yeah I don't know. <laughs> um like i said at first relatively you know for the first like 10 years ish or so things were relatively calm uh, as most boat poachers stuck to the northern islands and the egg company didn't claim the northern islands so they didn't really give a shit so they're like all right we can all make a little bit of money while we're doing this peacefully as yep. as peacefully as you can uh but all of this kind of gets overruled when the u.s government steps in specifically president of course god president buchanan and in 1859 president buchanan claims that all these islands are owned by the u.s government through imminent domain because they have to build a lighthouse because so many boats are crashing into these islands trying to get the eggs or trying to get to california <laughs> for the gold rush they're like we need they think a lighthouse, a lighthouse out there to fix it, and uh, and if we're gonna put They're the gonna lighthouse out there, we own all the islands. Or AKA, oh, these eggs sound like a really good idea to sell ourselves. Uh, yeah. So let's go. Yeah, and get I them. would like my foot in this door, please. And now that's ours because that's how things work in America in the 1800s. That is very much true. You want something? You just say, uh, uh, mine. Yep, mine now. To make things even more stupid for Buchanan, that lighthouse was actually built in 1855. And was already owned by the U.S. government and operated by the U.S. government. So, uh, yeah, you really didn't need to make eminent domain in 1859 because it was already there. Like, <laughs> But, it, I mean, whatever gets in his <laughs> islands, right? It's... Yeah, well, if you watch our Civil War in hindsight, you know Buchanan was just the smartest of all presidents ever. What a useless sack of shit. Uh, now, the operator of that lighthouse, you know, government employee, was uh, an Ira Rankin. And he respected the Pacific uh, Egg Company's rights 
and by respected, they paid him money, and so uh, he yeah, just looked the other way. He's like, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's totally fine. You just you know leave leave some money in the box, and we'll be good. Collect all your eggs you want. I don't care. You're not bothering me. I mean, no big deal. But, of course, after 1859, when it becomes public knowledge that these islands are government property and nobody can specifically lay claims to them, that's when the, uh, the egg poachers really get ramped up yeah. and the competition really starts to fall. So, so they decided that uh, the Pacific Egg Company no longer had the right to keep anybody else out. They were respecting them before that? Well, they weren't, but it, 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 it really gets to the point where they're like, they don't give a shit at all because... Technically speaking, now, anybody now they on have the, something yeah. to anybody. point to and be like, no, this ain't yours. Yeah. This is the U.S. government. Yeah, anybody so on the island is, yeah. right. well, okay. and by every bit of right, they don't have any right to it at all because anybody on that land is trespassing, but nobody cares because, you know, <laughs> eh, we're all trespassing. Because money's involved. Money's, yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's why right. nobody cares, Tommy. Uh, and specifically by 1863, the competition ramps up to the point where I still need to start. Like people are like, heads are starting to button. Yeah. The egg company's yeah, like, yeah. I'm the, losing eggs. The other companies have probably built up their sizes, and now they think, oh well, we're doing it better than you, or bigger than you, yeah. or want have to at it. do it better and bigger. And so now it's a problem. So things would ramp up uh, when David. Uh, Batch Elder would get his company formed up with a bunch of roughnecks that are going to go onto the island in 1863 in May and attempt to push off the Pacific Egg Company off the island so that they could have it for themselves. Yeah. Now, roughnecks, um, that was a specific, like, that's a group of people. You're not just labeling yeah. these folks the, roughnecks. Was that a specific that's, group? That's your, of that's your, that labeled, yeah, or? that's your, that's your group of, um, ne'er the wells, so to speak. This is your, okay. uh, this is your, your less than legitimate businessmen mercenaries these are mercenaries of yeah mercenaries okay. of sorts yeah uh so these uh these roughnecks they get up the idea in may to go out there and try to do try to land a group of armed men on these islands to take it back from the pacific aid company well the pacific aid company is able to fight off uh this group of invaders with the help of rankin the government official and his cronies now now fight off these are people coming in with guns yeah rowing up on a rowboat with guns yeah uh, they s- what a, you could just do that back they just yeah. do that. <laughs> well, people just did they, stuff they, like they that yeah yeah uh, there's a war johnny it's 1863 there's a whole war going on when we're doing that <laughs> okay but yeah but you're you know you're uh, again like you're allowed to kill people when you're at war when it's people whose eggs you want to take instead of them taking it i don't think you're allowed to go in guns blazing to take over well their first landing doesn't nobody can yeah they they they, <laughs> they land at first on the north island they kind of start to set up their camp and then here come the pacific egg company which again the north island isn't like the pacific right, yeah, egg company ever claimed that one uh but the pacific north egg company goes up there to the north island with rankin and his government cronies who operate the lighthouse and yeah. they uh they at gunpoint uh seize the weapons of uh of, of these men and send them on their merry way uh, Batch Elder is not, uh, you know, again, a lot of money in these eggs. I can't stress this enough. A lot of money in these eggs. Yeah. So he comes back a second time. Second time, similar results to the first. But the definition of insanity. So that, so that is that is kind of the cops just kicking them out. Yeah, that's cops like, kicking them yeah, kick out. Essentially. Yeah. Well, okay. that's, that's the government officials kicking them out like they should be doing, but ignoring yes. the fact that there's another group that's there, too, that they're like, that's fine. He's paying us. So are you going to pay us? Yep. Are you going to pay Follow us? the money. Follow the money. Yeah, follow the money. Uh, so the definition of insanity kicks in, Johnny, and, and, and Batch Helder, he's going to try a third time. This time, he's going to fill three boats with 70 men and a fucking cannon. Yes. Now we're talking. Yeah, point your gun at me. I'll point this cannon right back at you, bud. What are you going to do? And on, Nothing. And on June 2nd, 1863, he rows out to the island. He parks right out in front of the North Island and starts to get in a conversation with the Pacific Egg Company men who are already on the North Island set up. A nice conversation, just about, nice conversation. about the weather, likely. Yeah, about the weather. He says that, uh, hey, he's like, listen, I'm only going to land on the North Island. You guys have never claimed the North Island anyways. We all have as much equal rights to these islands, and by equal rights, I mean no rights, because the government None. said it's yep. ours, and mm-hmm. we can't have it. But we're, but look, let's all make. there's room for everybody to make a little bit of money. <laughs> Over yeah. the... Uh, and, that, and it's the North I mean, but this, they, they just don't care. They, yeah, they don't care. They're like, again... This is that 1800s, 1700s American mentality of I don't care about that thing until somebody else has it, 
and now I want it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Over the next day, the government cutter ship that was uh, the, the Rankin was on, the actual yeah. government ship that's out there, decides to uh, to pull up anchor and head for San Francisco because he conveniently just needs supplies. In other words, and I'm speculating here, Rankin was yeah. like, uh, uh, shit's going to hit the fan. I don't want any part of this. Technically speaking, I should have been booting out both of them. So if I just leave and just, buy. And just let them figure it out on their <laughs> own, like, it's okay. I can claim to be, yeah. you know, I can claim to Lincoln that, like, well, I didn't know what was going on. I was out there. Yeah, you know, I left. I had a resupply. This, this and, you know, it, it's, it's parents looking the other way when the kids are, you know, getting into a little tussle. Yeah, that's what you it know, is. Just let, let them work it out. You know, someone will get a bloody lip and come crying in a little bit, but they'll they'll, they'll figure it they'll out. They'll sort themselves out. And that's what he's hoping for. So he leaves. And in that interim on uh, June 3rd, uh, the Pacific A Company men allegedly yell out to Batchelder's men, uh, land at your own peril. To which Batchelder yells back, I'll land and I'll go through hell. For eggs. For Remind, eggs. Remember this. Eggs. Remember, this is for uh, eggs. looting bird eggs. Looting bird eggs, yep. They're going to die. They're going to die for looting bird eggs. For it. Uh, he and his men then spend the, the night of the third getting drunk on their boats uh, and getting fueled up by that alcohol anger fuel going, no, That's right. you know what? No. Uh, so they brought whiskey. They brought yeah. whiskeys okay. with them. They're like, no, you know what? No, we have we have every right to be here. They That's can't ours. Keep, it's ours. We can't manifest destiny. This is our land. <laughs> Yeah, we could have it too. So on June 4th, 1863, they attempt to land. And as they approach, the Pacific Egg Company warns Batchelder, like, look, we're going to open fire on you. Yeah, uh, gonna... Batchelder. Which also, uh, you can't just say, I'm going to shoot at you, and, ma and that makes it okay. That's, it's still, there's still, this is yeah. still just citizens on citizens. Yeah. Threatening to kill but each this other. Is, this, is, this is corporate business at this point. In the 1800s, well, this is uh, how yeah, corporations yeah, corporate. work. Yeah, this is how it. they work. Uh, but in any case, uh, Bachelor was like, I don't believe you. <laughs> come at me. Come, come at me. For, I got a cannon. What you going to do? And so they fire on him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well I mean. Uh, who, saw that, who saw that one coming? Yeah, surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> they did what they said. The first unfortunate soul to die is actually going to be a Pacific Egg Company employee by the name of Edwin Perkins, who's going to be mortally shot in the belly and bleed out over the next day, because that's going to be the most pleasant way to go. I mean, why doesn't he have a friend who Just, would shoot him again? She'd be like, put him out of his Tommy, room. I'll tell you what. You get shot in the stomach, yeah, and we do. are on an island stealing eggs. I'll shoot you again. Yeah, you get belly shot uh, at this time. Yeah, you're, you're, not, you're yeah. not getting to a hospital from uh, and even uh, if you, Pacific well, Island 30 miles out. Even if you got to in the hospital, it's the 1800s, Johnny. Leeches, uh, well, leech. I mean, no, I'm talking about I'm talking about today. Oh, yeah, if, we, today. if we find an <laughs> island to to loot some eggs and you, you get, get shot, shot in the, the stomach, yeah, I'll, put me I'll do you a favor. All right, that's fair, fair enough. Fair You're enough. welcome. Hey, thank you, Johnny. I appreciate it. Uh, after 20 minutes um, uh, of, of intense of gunfire, firing back and forth, uh, it becomes yeah. clear to the to Batch Elders men that we're on a boat trying to land on not very good terrain, and the Pacific A Company had set up defensive positions ahead of time, yeah. and we're not. That makes it difficult to, to get uh, there. Yeah, may maybe we shouldn't have tried three times before this, or however many in the same location and, uh, to land. Yeah, maybe change up some. <laughs> maybe locations. that gave them a heads up that we're coming hey, back. Oh, we're gonna try this. Set up your defenses. So uh, after 20 minute battle, uh, Batch Elders goes, All right, we're done. Let's retreat. Uh, and just the bounces. End, the end Did he use his cannon? Uh, yeah, I think that's probably okay. how one of the guys got hit. But in any case, yeah, the cannon was used. All the, Everybody's shooting at each other. Uh, but all the 20 minutes of shooting, because again, these aren't trained soldiers uh, shooting at each other. And of course, if you watch our Civil War in hindsight, you know that casualties for the number of people involved should be a lot higher. Uh, oh my but yeah. god, it's insane. After yeah. it's just nobody. I think I really think nobody wants to hit anybody. Yeah, nobody wants. And to. even if they do, it's pretty damn hard with the guns that they had in those days. Yeah. Uh, from those distances, from, yeah. from a boat, from a boat being movie, rocked yeah. by the Pacific Ocean, no doubt, yeah. with the waves because they're by shore, so there are waves coming in. But after 20 minutes, you get uh, one and only casualty for the Pacific Aid Company, which was uh, was Perkins, who was you know mortally wounded and killed. Uh, and then yeah, tough day. Uh, Batchelder's party, he's also going to lose one and get uh, uh, four wounded. So uh, so five guys on his end total. Not, uh, not wounded, bad. Wounded but not killed. That's wounded but not killed. Yeah, yeah, wounded I'd but say. not killed. Wounded but not killed. So like, two deaths. Like, two deaths tw over some eggs. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I probably twisted an ankle or something. Yeah, maybe. Trying to, <laughs> trying to stabilize back the themselves to shoot. 
Probably. When Lincoln finds out, he's furious. He's like, seriously, dude, we got the Siege of Vicksburg going on. The Union is torn apart. The Confederates have invaded. We're a month out from the Battle of Gettysburg. Because at this point, the Confederates have invaded. We're like, uh... Okay, but he didn't know we were a month out from the Battle well, of Gettysburg. Well, he didn't know we were a month out. No, he didn't know we were a month okay. out from the Battle of Gettysburg. But the Confederates... I don't know, because they planned battles back then. People went to them yeah. and watched them. They, they were planned, so I no, didn't no, know. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, uh, but, yeah, get it but yeah he's got a... He's got a lot of He's stuff like, going on in the real United States. Well, you know, divided. And, and you guys uh, want—he doesn't have to worry about whatever the hell's going out on the West Coast. Where uh, are they really part of the United States? I mean, come on. Yeah, right. I so, uh, so, I, so Rankin is going to be expelled from being the lighthouse uh, manager at this point. He's like, yeah, you're you're gone. <laughs> And then yeah, he I expels mean, fair. he expels all egg companies from the islands, makes the islands like off limits to Lincoln anybody. Does this. Yeah, Lincoln does this, makes the islands okay. off limits for anybody to go to. Uh, but of course, you know, every lighthouse keeper from then on just used that island as his own personal money pocketing because yeah. like oh I, every it's time a money printing machine every time I, every time I have to go and get supplies, I'll just fill up I'll a just... boat with some eggs. Yeah, bring a bunch of eggs, and then, you know, you get your supplies, and you walk home with several thousand dollars. Several likely. thousand dollars in your pockets, yep. Back to your lighthouse uh, to spend it on, I don't... Well, uh, you're, you're buying stuff you when mean? you're in San Francisco, but you're going back to the lighthouse and, you know... <laughs> and then and then what? I don't... I, I mean, you're in, a light, no, you're, thank uh, you. you're in the lighthouse. Maybe books, because... Yeah, you want, you, want, you want to be super rich on, on an island with... A lighthouse and no good nothing, beaches. Nothing else. Just rocks, just, just rocks and birds. With seals, and just, shiny birds. And just bird shit oh, everywhere. 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 Oh, my God. And, and during the summer. And, oh, the and smell. Spring and summer, oh, just birds smell. just mating all the time everywhere you look. The sounds. So... Ugh. The true victims, aftermath report, Jack, the true victims of this whole thing were the poor birds because the Muir population, like I said, at the time of it starting, was 400,000 birds strong. Uh, and and by the time this whole thing ended, uh, 6,000 strong. So um, that's, that's a genocide. That, that's a genocide. <laughs> that is, that is, yeah, that's a lot. That's like, what, 80% or so? Something like uh, that? Something like that. Holy so at the, uh, at the height uh, uh, of this uh, egg collecting, there was a half a million eggs that were gathered annually from these islands. So, shit. That's a lot that's- of eggs mind-boggling a lot of omelets uh and uh with the introduction though of uh, industrialized chicken farming the muir eggs uh, were no longer desired in the yeah people figured you know, out oh hey we got these dumbass birds we can just put in a box coop up and they and lay eggs they all year long all the time and when they never s- not lay an egg and when they stop laying eggs you just you get, eat them you, you put them in some <laughs> fried chicken yeah you're, you're yeah you go. And then you use their children's bodies to create chicken tenders after you you, know, you dip them in the egg and then the yeah, flour. And then, up, oh, yeah. my God. Oh. So good. Humans are the best. Well, thank you, chickens. Good yeah. God. <laughs> As the one animal, I think we could never live without. I would chickens. I would, oh, um, no, chickens. I, I would I, that would be it for me. If chickens cease to exist, it'd be like, well, time to go. Time to go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, the Muir the Muir eggs is no longer being needed. The Muir population was relatively allowed to regain. Uh, and today, the Fairlawn Islands okay. are actually a scientific preserve to study and monitor the Muir birdies themselves. And I'm sure that at no point in time, any of these scientists on these islands that were aware of the story went, "Huh? Maybe fried egg. Let's see, how, let's see how these taste." So that's uh, that's uh, one of more of Americans' random stories of how we went to war over something as stupid as an egg. That's it for this week in Historic Hindsight. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review, and join us next week when we talk about the Yule celebrations.